my name is Hillary Khan. I am the president-elect of AIEA. I am also the assistant dean for international education and global initiatives at the School of Global and International Studies at Indiana University Bloomington, uh, where I am also the executive director of the Center for the Study of Global Change. So what is a global classroom and what is global learning? Global learning involves having our students slice up reality differently. It involves looking at a particular social phenomenon or looking at a transnational issue or even at a very localized situation and having our students apply multiple perspectives, different angles of interpretation, and even different tool sets and methodologies in, its, in their analysis. It involves students looking at these phenomena, these very complex issues, and recognizing them as perhaps knots, knots that they need to untie Global learning is also about thinking across multiple scales, from the micro to the macro. And this is something particularly important when we're thinking about the internationalization of our, of our curriculum and campuses. Just like we need to be thinking in our classrooms and getting our students to think very big and very small, we also need to be doing the same thing on our campuses. We need to be incorporating broad institutional policies and practices and strategies and we need to be also thinking about all the diversity we have in our offices, our different departments and disciplines and schools. There are a number of issues that senior international officers need to know about curriculum internationalization. One of these areas that senior international officers are often not fully engaged in is, is in the classroom. And SIOs really need to have I would say, a, a really good, solid understanding of what is happening in a global and inclusive classroom. Another thing that SIOs probably do not think enough about when they are considering curriculum internationalization is the role of responsibility, instilling in our students a sense of global commitment, something that stretches far beyond, beyond the local. SIOs also need to know about different pedagogies. I think we often leave that up to the faculty to deal with, but in fact, SIOs have a particular responsibility to understand the difficulty of teaching globally. It's not necessarily an easy phenomenon to, to pursue. It is not necessarily something that comes naturally to educators and to faculty. It's something that necessitates high impact practices, really engaging active learning. It is something that is a skill, actually, that needs to be taught. Our pedagogies at a global classroom must transcend boundaries, uh, and our faculty just simply aren't prepared. So SIOs need to prepare professional development opportunities for their faculty and their staff so that everybody on campuses can become more globally aware educators. This involves providing faculty and staff with uh, training, with incentives, with a better understanding of what is global learning so that classrooms truly do become global sort of entry points to the world. With the recognition that global learning is really defined differently in different contexts. With that said, it is ultimately up to your campus to define what is your approach to global learning. There are gonna be many ways to internationalize your campuses and your curriculum. Your curriculum can be internationalized by doing a few small steps, introducing a course here or there. Perhaps it can be internationalized by refashioning the entire thing. There is not one right way to internationalize a campus or a curriculum. A curriculum is going to be internationalized based on whatever resources, whatever your strengths are, whatever your particular motivations and goals are, uh, and whatever your student body really seeks uh, to achieve. This involves obviously defining global learning outcomes at an institutional level, but also defining global learning outcomes that are malleable enough that the different disciplines and departments and schools at your campus can make sense of them and can define them. The other aspect of curriculum internationalization that SIOs need to be particularly aware of is how important it is to be collective. I think this is nothing new for SIOs, but it is particularly important for curriculum internationalization and particularly important because faculty have always been sort of the caretakers of our curriculum. One thing that SIOs often forget is the student's voice as well. Students must be involved in curriculum internationalization initiatives. They must help us define our global learning objectives. 
they must be at the table. So we all know how many tribes and territories we have in higher education. And one thing that curriculum internationalization needs to do is recognize that those exist and they're not going away. We cannot be thinking about our work in internationalization as only the administrators in one sole office trying to come up with ideas. What we really must do is make sense of all the different meanings and definitions of curriculum, of internationalization, of global learning, of multiculturalism, of all the different concepts that we regularly play with and recognize that we do not need to necessarily come up with a strict alignment, that we do not necessarily need to agree. I think too often we pursue our, our work in curriculum internationalization where we are striving to all come to one definition of internationalization, but ultimately we need to come up with, with strategies and plans that are broad and comprehensive, but yet malleable to the particular different disciplines and ideas and motivations and definitions that you're going to be encountering.